series. Today, we are back with Jim Hogan, who is going to be answering some questions about the Catholic faith for us. I am John Joseph. I am Isaac. And this, this is Jim Hogan. Hogan. Today, we're going to be asking questions about the Trinity. And here to ask those questions are Jacob, Hannah, and Ben. The Trinity is our belief that God is three persons within one being. I know that sounds really deep and fancy, but that partially came from us through God's revelation. When Jesus Christ came here, he already loved God the Father. So we knew about God the Father. Then when Jesus Christ came and he rose from the dead, whoa, then we had two, right? But then Jesus also said, I'm going to be sending you the Holy Spirit. So we had three. So we sort of lived this experience of three parts of God. Uh, maybe a way that we think about it in the same way that when you think of time, right? Time is one thing, right? But there is past, present, and future within that. Or we got you over here, right? You're, you're a body, you're a soul, and you're a spirit. Three parts of just one person. God is three persons, but still one God. I would like to talk about God the Father and the Trinity. Well, God the Father is the creator. In fact, remember at Mass, when you guys do the Apostles' Creed, we talk about God the Father, the creator um, of all that is seen and unseen. So God the Father is sort of the source or the start of our belief. We knew about God the Father ever since, really, human beings began. People have always sort of believed in God. Later, when the Son becomes man, Jesus Christ, we started to learn about the Son. So God the Father loves God the Son. God the Son loves God the Father. And here's kind of the cool, amazing part, okay? The love between these two is so amazing, so perfect, right? That the love between them, that bond between them, is actually a person. We call this God the Holy Spirit. That's kind of the relationship between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Is God the Father a he? Is God the Father a he? Wow, you guys are asking me the tough ones today. That's, by the way, questions that adults ask me. That's pretty amazing that you guys would have that uh, for me today as well. Um, God is the creator of all men and all women. So God would have all the attributes of the masculine and the feminine, the male and the female. So God would be something well beyond being sort of a he or a she. Okay, that's the first part. But second part, we have to relate to God. And there's only three ways you can relate to anything. You can relate to something as a he, a she, or an it. Well, we know that God is a person. So now we're down to either he or she. And this is where we use God's revelation. God has revealed to us that we should think of him, <clears throat> excuse me, God has revealed to us that we should think of him as a he in the masculine. He revealed that to the Jews throughout history. And you think about Jesus, um, the Lord, you guys all know the Lord's Prayer? Mm -hmm. Okay, say the first line with me. Our Father. Yeah, God reveals to us, Jesus even revealed, that we should think of God and relate to God as our Father. So that's why we think of God, we imagine God, we relate to God in the masculine as a he. Is Jesus God and man? Yes, he is both. He's not part God and part man. That would be like a mermaid that's kind of part human and part fish. Jesus is one, the son, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, became a human being at one moment in time, okay? And Jesus then would be 100% divine and 100% human. Now, the fancy thing you'll learn about when you're older, we call this the hypostatic union. Don't worry, you don't have to remember that. It just means sort of that basic or foundational union that Jesus was 100% the Son of God and 100% also a human being. That means he experienced everything that we experience. Jesus would have felt tired. Jesus would have felt hungry. Jesus would have gotten frustrated. He would have been silly. He would have been happy. He would have been sad. He would have been like us in all things, except because of his divine nature, he would not be like us in sin. That was the one way that Jesus isn't like us in his human nature. We sometimes call the Holy Spirit an it. Ah, uh, yeah, you're getting into a good point there. Okay, the Holy Spirit, 
This guy needs a publicity agent. He needs someone to promote him. First of all, he's not a ghost. He's not a bird, right, a dove. He's not even just a tongue of fire. The Holy Spirit is as real and as concrete as the Father and the Son. But we sometimes have a harder time imagining what the Holy Spirit sort of looks like. You know, it's kind of easy. You know, you think about your dad, maybe. You think about what fathers are. Jesus, we have lots of pictures of Jesus. It's sometimes harder to imagine the Holy Spirit. But I think, in a way, the Holy Spirit is okay with that. Because the Holy Spirit is often that thing inside of us that's prompting us to pray to the Father and to the Son. So he's okay, in a way, if he's sort of on the sidelines because he's that bond of love that exists between the Father and the Son, so it's his nature to promote the other two. So I think sometimes we, we misunderstand him. But the, the basic question, in answer to your basic question, just to review it again, is he's not an it, he's a he, and he's a person as real and concrete as the Father and the Son. This sounds pretty complicated. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. But, okay, even if you don't fully figure out the, this dynamic between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, here's the thing that really matters. Instead of just thinking about it, in a way, sort of just dive in. If you love God the Father, like Jesus the Son instructed us to do, if we, in other words, if we sort of dress up like the Son, imitate Jesus, live our life like Jesus, you know what he's going to do? He's going to show you how to love the Father. And here's the really cool thing. If you love the Father like the Son, guess what? You get the Holy Spirit too. The Holy Spirit can literally dwell inside of you. The Holy Spirit is God, and that's the answer. That's the thing all human beings have been looking for ever since the beginning of time is a secret to sort of reconnecting back to God himself. So you don't have to fully understand it. The better way is just to dive into it. In fact, even when you pray, you remember how you start prayer? You say what? In the name of the Father, Father, Son, Son Holy, Spirit. Holy Spirit. You're not just doing that to kind of lead yourself off in a prayer. What you're doing is you're saying, I'm going to pray within the Father and the Son. And by doing that, I can receive the Holy Spirit. So it doesn't, if it's a little bit complicated, don't worry about it. The idea really is to sort of dive into the dance that exists between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mr. Hogan, thank you so much for taking the time to teach us more about the Catholic faith. You're very welcome. Can't wait for more. If you like this video, then like and subscribe for more content. See y'all later. Bye! Bye. 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 Bye.